What's up guys, GT here. As most of you requested in this video, I'm going to be showing you how I dialed in the tone that I used on the latest cover on the channel. Yes, we're talking about Goodnight Kiss by Dream Theater. Let's jump in and let's dive. Now they say that time is money, right? What do I mean by that? Every preset and every tone that I've created on this channel has been 100% free and it always will be but it does take a lot of my time and effort to create those presets and to create these videos for you guys and share them and put them on the channel i'm not complaining though i love the process and i love your feedback your comments your likes your subscriptions all that is awesome keep the love flowing guys thank you so much what i'm hinting at though is that in case you want to support the channel monetarily and you want to support me in creating more of these presets and more of these free videos for you guys Please check the links in the description box below for my PayPal account where you can donate whatever amount you want to so that you support me in creating more of these presets. In return, I'd really appreciate that and give you a shout out in my upcoming videos as well. Enough of that, let's jump into the Axe Edit and let's dial it in. All right guys, in Axe Edit, I have a preset already loaded up for you guys. This has the amp and the cab already figured out just to save some time. The amp is gonna be a USA 2C Plus. Uh, it's gonna be a Mesa Boogie because it's the John Petrucci tone and John Petrucci loves to use Mesa Boogie. So I believe he used Mesa Boogie 2C Plus around the time when this album came out. I could be wrong though, but you know, this is not a tone quest. Now what I've got on the amp is basically everything is at stock at the moment. This is the USA a lead bright plus amp in the xfx2 and in the cabs i've got two of my favorite cabs already you know set in this is the f073 and f074 these are recto cabs 4x12 uh, v30 cabs already mic'd uh, i believe these are ml audio you've seen me countless number of times using these cabs and also what I've done is I've gone in and set my settings for the high cut and the low cut. Low cut is around 90 hertz to prevent most of that low end coming through. And the high cut is set to around 78, 150 to prevent most of that fizz and the top end coming through. I like it set up this way. Now, before we actually go ahead and start tweaking the amp, let's hear how it sounds at the default stock settings. Now I'm playing on the bridge pickup. This is the Ernie Ball Music Man JP15 and I'm on full volume, full down. This is how it sounds. That sounds nothing like the tone we want, of course, because Mesa Boogie amps are known for that. They need a lot of tweaking before they can actually sound the way you want them to be. So let's not waste any time. Let's dive into the amp and let's start tweaking it right away. We need a ton of gain in here and these amps are no short of that. They have a ton of gain in them already. What I'm going to do is push the overdrive and input drive almost up to the max, which is around nine. The bass, the mids and the treble are pre gain so you don't want any of them to be having too much of themselves in the in the tone stack at the moment so what you're going to do is reduce the bass quite low now usually i dial it around one or two but this time i went down to around 0.6 the reason being that some of the notes in the solo are played on the lower register or the lower e string which causes a lot of boom because we're going to add a lot of reverb as well in the preset the mids i'm going to push down to around two as well treble around six we're looking for that scoop sort of a mid-tone, uh, which is the kind of tone Petrucci likes. Presence, you don't want too much of it, uh, otherwise it gets too ice picky. This is a solo tone, you want it smooth and kind of fat. Master volume, I'm not gonna touch at the moment, let's leave it at four. Let's hear how this sounds now. All right, it's taking a bit of shape, but it's still not very convincing, right? That's where we need to go into the GEQ and tweak things to, you know, implement that famous V for Mesa Boogie amps, which causes them to sound really, really good. So let's go into the GEQ and do that. Now, there's no specific formula here to dial these faders in. They are mostly done by ear. What you're gonna aim for is a slightly V sort of a curve. We're gonna add in a good amount of bass and a good amount of treble, but we're gonna scoop the mids so that we kind of get the you know tone that we want. Usually I would you know dial this fader a little more up and a little more than what I have done right now, but I'm doing this slightly lower because I want to prevent the boominess that I talked about earlier because we're gonna have a lot of reverb coming in as well later. Now for the next one, which is 240, I kind of pushed it up to 1.7. Mids, usually this would go down quite a lot, but in this one, I pushed it to minus five because 
it's a solo tone we don't want it to sound too thin uh, the 2200 is at minus one. Now we're talking about the top end side of things and the last one 6600 is at around 2.4. Again, not too much treble being added. Let's hear how this sounds now. All right, that sounds good. Let's hear something on the neck pickup. That sounds really cool as well. A couple of other tweaks that I did to the amp before we jump into any of the other blocks is that I went into the dynamic section and I increased the dynamic presence. And I increased the dynamic presence. That's a tongue twister to say somehow. So I kept it around 2.6. What is dynamic presence? Basically, it's gonna give you an extra push of presence when you're gonna pick a lot harder, which is what usually sometimes we do. There are some places in the solo where you kind of pick really hard. Uh, the other thing that I did is actually use the output comp here, which is the out comp. Instead of using it as output, I used it as feedback. Now, what does feedback do? My first guess was that basically it's going to stimulate the real sort of feedback that you get from uh, a particular amp when you go too close to it. But I read the documentation from Fractal Audio. It, it is slightly more than that, I believe. It applies compression to the input and to the output as well. So you're gonna get a lot of more gain when you pick harder and a lot less gain when you pick, you know, kind of softly. So it works really nicely in this case. What I did is I applied it around 1.9 or two. I think two should be fine. Now let's hear how that sounds. That's sounding smooth and nice, but it's missing a lot of other elements. It's missing a lot of depth. It's missing a lot of you know, effects like the reverb and stuff like that. Now, before we actually go ahead and apply other blocks, what I also like to do is apply a gate in between the amp and the cab. This is gonna you know, prevent uh, a lot of noise because we're gonna be dialing in a very high gain preset. So what you can choose is a gate expander over here. Now, these settings are gonna be different per person. For me, minus 36 uh, kind of dB works well for the threshold. Ratio, I like to keep it down to 1.5. The only tip I can give you is keep your attack low to one millisecond and the hold and release to around 20 milliseconds. We want it to kick in as quickly as it can and to release as, you know, not too late, 20 milliseconds is good enough. You can also play around with the side chain to have a better gate. So in case you wanna try input one, if you connect it to input one, you can even try that for a better gate mechanism. Now with that done, let's move on to the other blocks. The other block that I like to add is a chorus. Uh, it smoothens the tone out a bit and also makes it a little wider as well. When it comes to chorus, dimension one is Petrucci's favorite. I believe it's been added on his request. What I like to do is keep the rate as low as possible, around 0.11, and I also turn down the depth to around 23%. All this is by ear, no magic formula, to be honest. And what I did in the mix is also brought it down to around 12.5%. I don't want too much chorus in there. 12% is good enough. Also, I went into the tone section. I always turn the dimension mode to high. This does give a better chorus effect, in my opinion. Let's hear how this one sounds. You can hear that chorus taking part and it's smoothing out the tone quite a lot and it's giving a bit of depth as well. The next thing I did is also add a drive block in the beginning to boost the amp a little bit and to you know tighten up some of that low end as well. So what I did is I added a drive block here. Uh, we're gonna choose T808. Drive's gonna be zero because we're just boosting the amp a little bit. Tone is gonna come down to around 3.4, I believe. Uh, wanted fat and not too sharp. I don't believe I touched any of these controls. All I did is push the level up to around 10. This is gonna give it a little bit of boost. The next block that I like to add is an enhanced block. Now, this is something that I sparingly use. I don't use it too often, but it's a fantastic block to use. What it does, it, it gives your tone a lot of more width and a lot of more depth, and it's really helpful to create that stereo effect and really fill your track with a good solo sound or a good preset sound, whatever your tone you're dialing in. So what I like to do in this case is push the width up to around 70% and also the depth I pushed around 72%. Low cut I didn't touch and I did push the high cut to around 15K. I don't want any top end being cut out. A Little bit of it, but 
that's okay. Level I kept it around zero dB. With that done, let's hear how it sounds. That sounds beautiful. It's already shaping up to be a very good tone. Now, from what I know, Petrucci is not a huge fan of reverb and usually usually likes to use a lot of delay in his tones. But believe it or not, in the playthrough that you heard, I did not use any delay at all. In fact, I slapped on some more reverb in post to make it sound a little bit full, more full and more ambient for the lack of a better word. So what I'm gonna do is add in a reverb and I'll also show you later how to add in a delay as well, if you want to. Uh, reverb, I'm gonna add in, in parallel and I'm gonna connect the dots. And what this allows me to do is keep the mix at 100% and control the level. And that way you get a 100% mix of the reverb in your signal chain. And you also get a dry signal chain as well, which is always good. Um, mix, as I said, pushed up 100%. This is gonna be a large haul. I hear a lot of reverb in the actual playthrough, but I could be wrong. So time, I think I pushed it up to three seconds. Don't think I touched any of these guys. Level, I think I pushed it down to minus two. Now let's hear how this one is sounding. That sounds really smooth and nice. One last little thing that I also did is I kind of hear a, some sort of a fixed wall or a cocked wall sort of an effect happening in the solo, although Petrucci is not known to use that kind of, that kind of stuff, but it could be his gear or could be something that has been done in the post. What I like to do to stimulate that kind of a thing is to add a filter block in the beginning of your signal chain. What the filter block will allow you to do is boost a certain frequency to get that sort of an effect. What I like to do is use peaking too. And the frequency you wanna you know, toggle is gonna to be somewhere around the mid area to get that kind of a nasal honky sort of a sounding thing. But the effect's gotta be subtle and it's not gonna to be too you know dominant in the tone. Otherwise the tone's not gonna sound that good. So the gain is where you would dial it in according to your taste. Now, the frequencies that you want to toggle is around 900 to 1200 hertz, or even you can go to 1400, but anything less than that and more than that, you're either touching the bass frequencies or you're touching more of the top end, which you don't want to do. So I kept it at 1000 hertz only. The gain, I pushed it up around 4.45. And the Q is what determines how wide your effect is going to be and how or how thin and how narrow the effect's gonna be. So I like it around 1.6. The gain, as I said, if you push it too much up, the effect's gonna to get too nasal and too honky. If you keep it too low, it's not gonna to be too dominant. So this is how it sounds. <laughs> You get the idea. I think that tone sounds really cool. But in case you want to add a delay, you can definitely go ahead and do that. Nobody's stopping you. I won't stop you at least. But go ahead and do it at this spot in uh, in series with the signal chain and not in parallel. What Petrucci likes to use is a ping pong and I think he likes the tempo of uh, dotted eight. Uh, feedback, you can push it up a little bit. Mix, I'm gonna keep it where it is. EQ, I always recommend you bring down the high cut a little bit more or use a ducking delay so that the repeats of the delay do not sit in your tone and it do not interfere in your playing. So with the delay added, this is how it sounds.
Man, I really love that tone. I could play on it for hours and hours. Well, that's pretty much the tone that I wanted to share with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed dialing in the tone with me and hope it sounds fantastic on your gear as well. As always, do remember to check the links in the description box below and keep your love flowing, guys. Keep the likes, keep the feedback, keep the comments, keep the subscriptions flowing. I'd really appreciate that. And until I see you guys in the next video, make sure you stay safe. Keep rocking, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye.